you guys, welcome to the channel. This is Becca, you've seen her in some of my other videos Hello. as a model. Yeah, we're gonna talk about our trick. At the time, we were both beginning photography, so we used some beginner gear. Despite that, we were really able to um, see the sites and take some really good shots along the way. We'll also share some really good vegan and gluten-free spots we found for anyone who does have restrictions. We're gonna talk about our photo locations that we found and then some of our best food spots. And make sure you stay till the end of the video because there's something that we found out at the airport leaving that almost got us stuck there. If you're traveling to Lisbon yourself, don't get stuck at the airport. All right, so let's go ahead and jump on in. We're gonna start with Lisbon, which is a city we flew into. And off to Portugal. Also, there is a really easy subway to get from the airport to the main part of the city. I'm gonna go through the map of Lisbon and we'll start with like the main touristy area. This is where like all the touristy shops, touristy restaurants are. There's a really good donut shop. They have donuts and ice cream and it was so good and it's pretty much right in the center. Warm donut, cold ice cream, excellent. Mix. We found one of our favorite restaurants of the yes. whole trip. Benjerica. It was all like super fresh and super delicious and the waiters there were really awesome and were really funny. Uh, we'll start with the types of photos that you can get in each of these places. In the main touristy area, it's a lot of like long straight streets of just stores and shops. So if you're into street photos, uh, if you're into, uh, there are like trams going around, but it's mostly people walking around in this kind of area. They have this elevator, this big old elevator, and that'll give you a nice overlook of the city from the center. And then there's the next part of the city I wanna talk about, which is called the Alfama District. And this is kind of the classic kind of old town Lisbon. This is where you get the windy roads with the trams going through. This is the kind of shot that you can expect from Alfama district. And there's just a lot of like old stores, old shops, old restaurants. Bars with a very traditional kind of music. I'm forgetting the name of it, but we're gonna put it yeah. up. And then the next area I wanna talk about is like the shopping district of Lisbon. This street, it's got like a walking strip in the center and then on either side of the street is all your big uh, designer stores and stuff like that. And then along the way- Squares. Yeah, squares with like small- Coffee shops. Shacks or... and restaurants in the middle of the street. So we took the train all the way to this place called Local, but then they turned us away for eating inside. They said takeaway only. So we just got two poke bowls and uh, we're just chilling. Park. We found one of these uh, stands with a whole bunch of tables, so we got a drink, we got our food, a little picnic in the park at what time? 11 o'clock at night, so yeah, it's gonna be a good time. The next area of the city I wanna talk about is called Barrio Alto. In this area, which is probably one of my favorite parts of Lisbon, was you can find like these just squares with just like stands with uh, alcohol and coffee and drinks. It's a lot more closed off, so it's usually surrounded by buildings. Yeah. Feels a lot more private, and the squares usually have really traditional Portuguese architecture, um, exactly. and maybe there's like a traditional church at the other end, so it's a it's a very nice like courtyard feel. I would say there is the famous pink street in this area as well So it's known for its long line of bars along the street, but it's a very popular Photo location because the street is painted completely pink and then there are um, rainbow umbrellas Yeah, up umbrellas along the top um, So it's definitely more like the Instagram photo spot. You can also go along the main road So along that main road is just lines of uh, tram tracks. Uh, so you get some really nice shots there uh, there's also the giant square, you know, there's a big Archway and there's performers over by the water Posing shot that is where I would go but I would try and go when there aren't a lot of people because otherwise it's very crowded if you keep going along the water there's a place called the timeout market which is kind of a huge building with just, tons of food yeah it's like individual stalls of restaurants uh, so it's definitely somewhere to go if you want something a unique place to eat 
They have big timeout markets in other major cities too, so you might be familiar with that. I would definitely check this one out though because the architecture of the building itself is really cool. I wanna also add for any gluten-free people out there, on the way to the timeout market on that main street, there's a really little side restaurant and it looks kind of like a hole in the wall. Um, and this is the best place to get the very famous Portuguese pastel donadas. What is this place, Miss? Um, they have vegan and gluten-free huh? pastel donadas. Yeah. So here we go. All right, let's give it a try. <laughs> yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, which are these like little egg custard tarts. Yeah. Um, and they have gluten-free ones there and vegan ones there. So they are absolutely delicious, but it was definitely <laughs> really, really good. And then further down that main road, uh, along the water, uh, you'll get to kind of the end of the giant bridge at the ground level is a place called the LX factory. This was probably my favorite part of the city. It's very artsy um, and I'll let you keep going. But. Yeah, I think it's a place where it's mostly locals and mm -hmm. um, you know, it's so far removed from the touristy area, but still easy to get to because you can just take a bus or a tram. They have uh, craftsman shops. Uh, interesting food options. Galleries too if you're into art. Yeah, galleries. They have a ni really nice bookstore there yeah. as well. I would say that there's Portugal is known for some of their really famous bookstores and the one in LX Factory is definitely one to check out. There's also a vegan restaurant there where they have really good risotto and they have really good pancakes and really, really good food. I want to talk about in the Lisbon area are the overlooks to see the cities from. We went to three different overlooks at sunset on three different days. We are almost to the top of the hill. Lots of stairs. Yeah. But we are almost there. steps already. <laughs> Let's go. Adventure. But I think by far our favorite was uh, the one at Castelo de Sao Jorge. Jorge. Yeah. Yes. So uh, not only is there an overlook there, uh, but there's so much else to do. It's a whole castle, as the it's name massive. implies. Yeah. There's lots of peacocks. There are lots of peacocks. <laughs> They're just roaming around the castle. So. Um, yeah, they just walk around on the ground. They're they, funny. Yeah, they are. They just, they're loud. They're funny. They're showing off their feathers. So yeah, definitely, definitely interesting. Did not expect the peacocks. Also, there is usually a line to get into Castel San Jorge, and you do have to pay. I think you have to was, pay a little bit. It's not too much. It was around. I think it was like worth it. ten U.S. dollars to yeah. per person to enter. So initially, the line was really long, and so we weren't feeling it. So we kind of walked around that whole area, and you're up on this hill, and they have really cute little like wine bars and tapas bars yeah, and stuff like we had that. Sangria. Sangria was delicious. We made our way back around just to see how the line was, and it was a lot shorter, and it was actually closer to sunset. So for for some reason, around sunset, the line is shorter and it is a lot easier to get in. Um, and then you can, you know, explore the castle if you're still waiting. They have food and drinks inside the castle ground. Hello. And now uh, we got crepes. So they have little carts with, they have one a crepe cart, they have uh, drinks carts, and then they have one just kind of just random food. So I got apple cinnamon crepe. It's delicious. Would get and yeah, that's it's coming. I'm gonna take a lot of good pictures, videos. I'll show you guys. Um, and then the views from the castle are just gorgeous because you get every most parts of the city from the castle because it kind of loops its way around an entire hill. Yeah. Um, so that was definitely our favorite spot, and we spent time there from sunset also into kind of like the blue light zone. Um, and you got some cool shots of the city with both kinds of lighting. So we'll definitely show you guys some photos of that too. For sure. So there's actually two notable places we want to talk about where you can get food in Lisbon. Uh, we'll start with the dessert. Okay, Becca, what do we get for dessert? Um, we got gelato. So I got the strawberry and the dark chocolate, both of which are vegan, which is super nice. And you got... Dolce de leche. Yes. Um, and they made it into this whole little flower thing, and we didn't know this until after, but you can add a macaron on top. So, yeah. Recommend. They also had vegan chocolate that was delicious and fruit flavors. And now that brings us to our favorite place that we ate in Lisbon. This place is called Tamarind, which is an Indian restaurant, and it's by far the best Indian food either of us have I ever think had. it was probably like top three meals for me ever. Also super cheap and affordable. Yeah, we got And like the best Indian food I've ever had. 
yeah, we got you no know, five or six or seven dishes. It was like 32 euros. So. And you have to know about it in order to find it. It is truly down this alleyway. If you have the opportunity to kind of get away from the touristy areas for your food, uh, get kind of more authentic feel places because um, there are just so many restaurants uh, in Lisbon to be discovered that are just that are not you know super touristy, super advertised. Also, if you like tapas bars, we actually found one in kind of the main area, so it was definitely more touristy and it was a little bit more expensive. Um, but it was very traditional tapas. They had patatas bravas there if you really like those, which I am obsessed with. Um, and they had some good seafood, so I think you got prawns. Yeah, so there's one more location I want to talk about. Not far from Tamarind, uh, there's kind of like an upper area of Lisbon, kind of more residential, not super touristy, but we got some really good uh, gelato there. Uh, and then if you walk along the streets there, there's a very nice overlook of the city from the other side. Uh, I know we talk about the um, you know, Castel de San Jorge, uh, but it's kind of the opposite side of the city of that, so you can see the other overlooks. Uh, that's really nice. And then there's one super picturesque uh, alleyway uh, with trams on a hill. So definitely check that out. Get, in, get a gelato and then make your way to this photo location. Um, and even at nighttime when the trams aren't running, the lights are on, so you get a really cool shot just from the top of it. Okay, so after Lisbon, we took a train up to Porto, which I think was about two or three hours. Uh, Super easy, definitely worth it. From the t moment we got there, we were just in kind of like photo heaven. Not only like in the area where the trains pull in, but also you know where the ticketing is are these gorgeous blue tiles on the walls. And then I would even say the second you step outside of the train station, you have these build, you have this view where you see all these different streets, but the roads are very narrow and the buildings are very tall. So from a street photographer's perspective, it is super ideal. Um, there's also a lot of cars that go by that are like pretty old cars that are super cool. Um, and lots of people so it is pretty amazing and we'll definitely show you guys some shots um, But I loved that place for photos. It was very cool One of the coolest things about Porto is wherever you go There's kind of like an overlooking place to find you walking through an alley You would look out and there's just a gorgeous view of the city uh, from kind of uphill. Definitely yeah. a city that I recommend spending an afternoon or something just getting lost in and exploring. Um, it is very walkable and is one that you can truly just find some really cool things that you wouldn't find otherwise. <laughs> Now let's talk about some of the specific areas where you can find some really good photos. And I think the main area of Porto that you're gonna wanna go to is the Ponte Luis First Bridge. Uh, which, this is the main bridge going over Porto. There are uh, trams going over Super the bridge. Super cool shots at nighttime here too. Yeah, excellent nighttime photo opportunities for kind of long exposure shots. Uh, they have the gorgeous castle in the background. I forget what the name of it is, but um, you can definitely get some really amazing shots at night from on top of the bridge. When you go across the bridge, you actually have like a market on the other side. There's food trucks and all sorts of things. And I think we went on the weekend um, and there were all sorts of people just like partying outside with the DJ. And so it was really cool to watch everyone just kind of partying. Yeah. If you were into nightlife, I would definitely say Porto is worth a visit. Um, they had a lot of nightlife. They had clubs on boats. Like pretty much anywhere you go in the there's pop-up bars everywhere. You can find like a bar every block you go. You're never gonna have a hard time finding a place to drink here. That's for sure. I think the Riverwalk is yeah. probably an excellent place to spend at least a few hours. Our uh, favorite spot. Yeah, notably the restaurants kind of overlooking the river. Uh, we found an excellent one. Had some really good sangrias. Had some uh, really good kind of like, like tapas. Flaming and, sausages. Yeah. How <laughs> is it? Very good. It was on fire. Right now it's not. And I prefer it that way when I'm eating. <laughs> 
really uh, interesting food. They had street musicians, a uh, ton of just people, shops, and everything like that. So if you find yourself along that way, definitely sit down at one of those that are kind of overlooking everything and just people watch and watch the boats go by. It is a really relaxing way to spend a couple hours. And then within Porto itself, they have the Clarigos Tower, which is the you know huge tower that you can see from anywhere. Uh, it just makes for really nice backgrounds of your photos, of course. We did not go to the top of the tower. There was a very long yeah. line. I don't know if that view is worth it necessarily because you get so many amazing views from so many other places that are free and shorter to wait. Speaking of really long lines, there's also a very famous bookstore in Porto, uh, something to do with Harry Potter. On our way to the Clarigos Tower, which is back there, we came across this enormous crowd, really famous bookstore in Porto. You have to pay to get in. There are so many people here. So I guess if you want to go, go early. It's a Saturday, yeah, so, so on a weekday or something. It was insane. <laughs> and decided uh, that we don't really need to see this bookstore that badly. Also, I wanted to add in Porto, we went on a boat tour. I would say it was worth it. Just reserve your ticket for a boat tour whatever time you want to go. Make sure you bring sunscreen. If it's sunny out. But the boat tour was super cool. You go up and down the river, um, and it's just a really nice way to see the city from a different standpoint. Um, you get some really good photos as well, and you get to see some places that you wouldn't see otherwise. There's some really lush green areas outside of Porto that we had no idea about. Yeah. Um, and you get to see some other parts of the city. So I would definitely say it's worth it and worth spending the time and money to do. Also from Lisbon, we went to a town called Sintra, most known for the giant red and yellow kind of fairy tale castle. You see in all the Instagram posts and everything like that. If you do go, I do not recommend waiting in the line. So let me show you a view from this castle. It is absolutely beautiful. Everything you can see is accessible without waiting in line. The line is only to go inside the castle and see stuff like like you know, the bed, the prince's the, bathroom, yeah. the prince's bedroom. You know, if, if you're, if you're into, into that, that, then it's worth it. Exactly, but I was not really into it. I didn't know that I could just see the outside of the castle and all of the you know overlooks without waiting in line for two hours. So, they don't make that obvious either. Yeah, exactly. So definitely, if you want to see the castle, I would recommend just going. Don't wait in the line. To see the castle and then there are so many other castles in Sintra that we were not able to see because we spent so much time at this one uh so I some would... of them look really cool and have less tourists going to them so i almost would say it's worth your money to go to some of the other castles instead i will say when you are in Sintra, it is worth it to get the tuk-tuks they are so much fun i was very skeptical at first but it is the easiest way to get up the castle once again it is super super hilly they say that you can walk I would not There's recommend no that unless that... you're a really avid hiker. Definitely worth it. And also, I think that was my favorite part of the trip to Sintra. It was just so much fun. Like you like feel really fast and you're kind of like shaking. Um. Yeah, flying downhill on a tuk-tuk <laughs> is definitely a, adrenaline. A, a new experience. Mm -hmm. One last thing I want to mention before we close out this video. When you're going home from the Lisbon airport, assuming you're going uh, outside the EU, for us we're going to the United States. When you're leaving, you're going to go get your tickets, you're gonna go through security, and then you're gonna show up at an area of restaurants. And you're We decided to get food, because we were hungry, and we thought that once you get through security, you're ready to go back home, but we were very wrong. After the restaurant area, there's an, a customs yeah. that you have to go through. So. Uh, don't think that once you've hit the restaurants, your gates are right around the corner. No, you have to go they through. They are not. <laughs> you have to go through a customs. We only gave ourselves like 30 minutes to get to our gate after we ate because we thought they were just going to be right here. And it was barely enough time. So uh, thank you guys for watching our video. I hope you enjoyed. But if you want some more guides for travel or photo locations in these places, please go ahead. Feel free to hit subscribe. Uh, leave a like, comment on the video down below, and we will catch you guys in our next travel adventure Which photo will be review in Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico. <laughs>